Hi, my name is Dave Cuthbertson. I'm the CEO and one of the original founders of AssetGen. I'm going to take you through our AssetGen system mapping software and also show you uh, various examples and we'll finish off with some next steps. On the right hand side you see that our system mapping software is designed to understand the logical infrastructure and how the hardware and applications and virtual systems all deliver services and business processes. This is complementary to our other tool covered in a different video called AssetGen Connect which looks more after the physical infrastructure that underpins all of that infrastructure covering all the physical and the cabling. So let's get started and why would we want to buy AssetGen SysMap? And there's a number of different reasons. Quite often it's because the task of trying to do all of that mapping requires lots of resource. Often people don't document what they have and it takes a long of time and also a lot of cost. But the key issue is that there is actually a lot of risk associated with changing any of those elements or components. And so to answer a number of the questions, how do we do this in our system mapping software where we may have a CMDB with service mapping data? What we're looking to do is replace thousands of spreadsheets that people will often use as individual tools, but also where data is locked up into systems such as CMDBs or configuration management databases. Quite often you can't analyze or present their data and so you'll still go back to using spreadsheets and maybe Visio diagrams. For a lot of our customers, they use Visio as a diagramming tool, but also to show relationships and dependencies between systems. And as a result of that, one of the things we'd like to do is to produce those schematics directly from the data and also have the ability to update them. For many environments, the typical will require many hundreds of diagrams to explain all the different perspectives of how business processes and services are underpinned by applications and all of the various low level and hardware components. And as organizations change their technology, their staffing, you end up having to look to create an institutional database which your existing staff, contractors and providers could make use of to plan and manage risks. They could be cybersecurity risks, they could be change risks, they could be uh, disaster recovery planning, they could be environment management. But the key thing there is anybody should be quickly able to identify impacts and dependencies. Two different people should be able to get the same answer so that then they can understand how to respond to an incident and they have risk awareness where it comes to planning and managing changes and they would know what risks there are so they can mitigate them. So those are effectively the reason for buying SysMap. It's a combination of things but the key thing here is all about understanding risk across multiple technologies and systems. The system mapping software is available in two main versions, very much like our Connect system. There's a desktop version and the desktop version has its own database and it's licensed by the numbers of configuration items. There is also a server multi-user system, more for operational use, where we have multiple sets of people and we have a web interface and that web interface allows anybody with a web browser to be able to see and understand risks and impacts without necessarily having to log into a CMDB or other tool sets. So quite often we may be taking data from a service desk configuration management system and actually making it more accessible and visible for service information. Our database is the same for both so you can start with the desktop system and prototype and map all your applications and quite a few customers use this as a way of getting their CMDB data into a better shape and then uploading it into their service desk. So it's very convenient for people wanting to do a quick start or they're just doing a minor project uh, with the desktop system. There's many different ways of mapping applications and systems and here are a couple of diagrams that show just different perspectives but in order, that you can see from the top there, service mapping typically is a big area where people use our software because they've adopted the ITIL framework and one of the good things in ITIL is to recommend that you understand incidents and changes and you use the same system to also do service reporting and so you have to map systems and make it part of the uh, tool set so then you get consistency in reporting and information sets. But there are many other ways. You may want to map from a data flow perspective you may want to understand environments like the, what's the production environment, the test environment and then you can see there's many other examples where people have used our software for doing completely different things. Uh, you may want to map data as opposed to map the components that support the data for things like GDPR. And the last point there, uh, a lot of people use this also for mapping test models where you build something, document it, do your tests and then you may need to recreate the same system a long time in the future because there's been a change in hardware or software or system and you need to recreate the test environment. 
So you may have multiple sets of test models for different purposes. So lots of different ways of doing system mapping. And our software has been used for all of these different types. And there's many other types on top of this as well. So let's now go and have a look at uh, SysMap and how it works. This is the system mapping interface. What you see on the left-hand side is a tree structure where you can define the various groups and types to hold the various hardware, software and other components that make up your infrastructure. And you have a lot of flexibility in how you organize things. So here, for instance, I've got a business grouping and I've separated out services, interfaces and functions. Likewise, I may go down into say the software side and separate out differences between applications, middleware and services. And this is uh, partly the thing that most people find with system mapping is you need a very flexible structure to be able to handle the technologies and the focus that you have applied. If we go into any one of these, if I open up the software applications, uh, here I have a list of uh, uh, configuration items, software platforms, and I can click on any one of these, let's well, click on Backs IP. And on the right hand side, you'll see I have a name, and then there's various other control boxes to allow us to categorize some people will call this metadata or classes to allow us to get consistency with our reporting and the way we categorize information. And for any configuration item, you'll see there's a range of attributes and you can set and configure and evolve these very much like our Connect system so that as the information requirements change, you can bring in more information about all of the various configuration items. The key bit for most people is in the relationship side and on relationships, this is where we then start to do that dependency mapping between, in this case, parent devices. So this software is underpinning and supporting various business processes or services, client funds transfer and core banking, but also a particular piece of middleware. And then on the child basis, we can see that this software, or Bax IP, relies on various applications and services and databases and firewalls. And this essentially is the simplicity of system mapping. You can create your own system mapping environment with just two spreadsheets. And that is typically how people will bulk load information into our system, either through manual collections or through actually bringing in data from other tool sets, such as service desks, discovery tools, uh, VMware, whatever. We need just two spreadsheets to bring the data in. One for all of the components on the left hand side and on the right hand side, the relationship between them. But as with all things that are very flexible, it does mean you need to decide on your mapping methods. With any of these, just to carry on with looking at some of the information sets, we can have some notes. But a core thing here is to look at uh, impact analysis. So this will navigate through all the relationships. So you don't have to understand the data. You just have to say, I would like an answer on something. So it may be, could we understand what the business impact of this is? I'm going to filter out all business impacts. And what we can see there is this would actually impact five business related uh, services or functions, not just the ones that are immediately connected, but ones that are then connected through impacts from other things, such as the software that we saw earlier. And likewise, if I want to look at dependencies, I could just leave this blank and say, show me all dependencies, but what does Bax IP rely on in order to run? And you can see there's a variety of different uh, databases, mainframes, network, VLANs, switches, servers, and other things that in all, in some way, would impact Bax IP to be able to deliver its role and its function. If this is too much data, I can always just filter out and say, could you just give the server components that were involved? So I've got a very quick way of understanding that all these servers are in some way related to the delivery of Bax IP. And we just follow that through in doing every part of the infrastructure. So there's a lot of flexibility. What I'll do is I'll look at it from a different perspective. I'll go and look at a server. So let's look at a physical server called ServerWin001. Here we can see on the left hand side we have a server. It may have different attributes being a physical component as opposed to a piece of software. And yet again you would set up the attributes to be more appropriate. We can see here that we've also related various documents to be able to access this information about the server that already exists. It could be recovery plans, it could be a Visio diagram that it shows it, it could be a a user manual, it could be a, a contract, anything that's appropriate that you would like to associate with this so it's easy to find and may have more information or detail. The relationships for this server, we can see that on the right hand side 
that has a couple of databases and some software. So if I want to do an impact analysis and I want to see what does the server do, we can do an impact analysis and we can run and we can then see that this server would impact a number of databases, applications and business functions. If that's too much detail, as before, we filter out to make it easy and simple to say that if you touch that, so these are the business functions that would be impacted potentially by a change to that server. If I want to understand this from a schematic or pictorial perspective, we just do a right click on the server and you see we have various options and one of them is to do a drawing, so let's do a drawing. And AssetGen will take that server and we then have on the right hand side a number of controls and if I don't do anything else I just hit uh, draw it will then match up the data with the Visio stencil it will then create our diagram for us and here we have a diagram that shows a raw output which we can then lay out to make it a bit more understandable because sometimes we have direct relationships sometimes we have inferred relationships you may want to actually make it so that you don't have things crossing so we might actually uh, change the layout of the system so it's easy to understand as you can see and this is one of the challenges is how do you make something very complex simple to understand and in some cases it's just laying it out in a slightly different way and there we are that would have normally taken people quite a long time to draw but actually for us it's just one of the type of outputs we've just shown one server but we can always show multiple servers and systems and we can see the relationships and this was come directly from the data if this is too much information, we can then filter it out and we can get a very simplistic view where I may want to have the business view, but if I take this off, I want to see the business perspective, I want to see the service perspective, and so now draw me a diagram without any of the intervening detail. So I can simplify the layout and get and produce things like architecture diagrams where we just want a very simplistic view. And so there is the same diagram but without all the attendant details so there's a lot of flexibility as to how you produce this when you're documenting different types of environments different types of devices so that's some of the basics and we extend on a little bit further onto these diagrams and I'll just show you a couple of different types of diagrams to show you some of the flexibilities and so this is typical of a an ITIL type change impact diagram often taken from CMDB data where at the bottom level we have a physical perspective of blades and servers and mainframes the next level up is logical devices virtual systems virtual host logical partitions and I've now got databases applications and I've split the business functions and services to actually show us a back-end and a front-end process this is typical of a type of output this is obviously a very simple one there's only a few servers on it but we can make use of Visio's capabilities to say could you just color code and show me the end-of-life risk for instance so in this case we can see that there's a red green amber type approach or maybe which of these components can we recover in our recovery center that we've tested and we've proven so we have a high degree of confidence the key thing is our diagram here has served multiple purposes the applications or application platforms there may be different terms that you see there in green could also be reused and we could have a different type of mapping here's a, a flow mapping um, but I'm going to show here so here's a, a very simplified data flow mapping between all of them so we don't see any of the servers or systems because it's not appropriate we don't see the business processes what we're more interested here is how does data feed from one system into another so that we know what our windows are for changes but also if there's a problem with queues or messages getting through we know the downstream impact on the delivery of systems or reports or services to people a different type of diagram with different type of relationships so there's many different ways to do this uh, everybody has slightly different styling so you can use whatever symbols you want and you can also use whatever data you want and typically the best thing is to use existing data that you may already have available so let's just go back to our system mapping software we showed that we can do an impact of one server but we also have the capability to do multi device impacts so if I go to a multi CI impact this then gives me the flexibility to do the same with impacts and dependencies so I could take an approach at looking at the top I have various business functions or services so here I have a number of business uh, services I could take say these three business services use them as my start point and then I can look at all dependencies that deliver 
those particular business services. So here's a consolidated view of everything that those uh, systems use. And I can bring this out as a spreadsheet to make it easier to use. So I can actually then filter it out and say, really, I'm just as interested in the software and only the software applications. So what software applications are used for each of those? And now I have a very simplified view to see that there we have the different starting CIs on the left hand side, the business services, and here we have the affected ones. You can always sort them and you can see that in some cases it's then easy to recognize that Bax IP and Bax Shared and Claims Processing and Group Accounts are all just shared across uh, a couple of those. But of course if we want we could always draw a picture of that because we can always have multiple components being shown in our diagrams. You can do it a different perspective, you can look from the bottom up. So if I just reset all the filters, it may be that as part of a server migration plan, we're going to take a number of Windows servers and migrate them to a cloud infrastructure, or we're going to want to understand if we were to replace these ones with maybe a new version of Windows or Linux or something. And so there I have my four servers. I can do the same, but now I can do an impact looking upwards. And so this is the impact of every server and what it does from a software and business and application perspective. And I'll always filter that out and say what I really want to know is from a software perspective, what do those servers do? And now I've simplified the complex infrastructure and I've made it appropriate to whatever the particular need is. So our system mapping software is very flexible. There's many other options that we can see here, uh, but for most people, it's the ability to create schematics as well as to get quick answers to potential impacts or dependencies to correlate with monitoring tools or to do with change requests or transition projects that make our system uh, quite useful and important to people. So I hope that gives you uh, a very quick overview of our system mapping software. What we would recommend as the next step is first of all to assess your current position, work out what data you have uh, or don't have and also how you do schematics and make yourself more aware of how people communicate and all the differences and different ways they're doing it so that then maybe we can have a more standardized way that everybody can use and support. Contact us and arrange a, an introduction online demo. There's lots of other organizations that have gone through this process over the last 15 years that we've been in business and we can uh, talk through and get through to some form of plan or proposal. If you want to do some form of evaluation or you would like us to take your data and put it into our system to show you how it would work, we'll be glad to do that. Uh, it all depends on the, the cost and the complexity of what you're trying to achieve. So thank you very much everybody. I hope that's given you a good understanding of our system mapping software and its capabilities.